Hi, it's Jerry Griggs with Obsidian Wisdom. Today I'll be answering the question, what are the three types of retirement? Go ahead and leave in the comments your thoughts on our proverb of the day, which is a child who is not embraced by the village will burn it down to feel its warmth. Again, I will put the video out in the future where I will share my thoughts on it, where we can have that discussion and that dialogue. But as far as what you think, go ahead and share that thought in the comment today. Today we're going to talk about the three types of retirement. So as things have changed, so have the way we've looked and defined and strategized and even dreamed about retirement. So the first one we're going to talk about is a traditional retirement. Basically that is where the first 20 years of your life will consider that training. And then somewhere from, you know, like 21 to 65, you'll be working. And then from 65, onward you'll be retired so your retirement is considered your your leisure your traveling your your time where you kind of do whatever you want whether that is relaxing whether that is um you know maybe working on a hobby starting a company just just whatever that looks like that's what you are going to focus on and you're going to kind of forego a lot of that leading up and until then so when you're focusing on working you'll be working from 20 to 65 that's going to be the traditional retirement You'll, you'll work and on average, they say now, the labor department says we have on average about 12, 13 jobs over our lifetime. So you'll, you'll work in different places with different skills, get promotions. You'll, um, you may just work in the same place and just kind of work your way up that ladder. But at 65, you'll call it and say, you know what, I'm ready to have a little bit more me time. And so that's the traditional form of retirement. So what that does for your strategy is you're able to really devote a solid 40, 50 years towards just working and putting money away for retirement. So whether you're putting away, you know, like 5% each year or you're putting away, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30%, wherever that number's at, you have 40, 50 years to put that money away so that you're able to then retire and you're going to be retired for, you know, maybe 20, 30 years, maybe even 40, we'll say, but you have a good amount of time to build that income. So you're able to compound that, that interest and you're able to grow that money, that nesting. And then the second retirement strategy is what we'll consider maybe the ideal one where what will happen is you same deal as far as from zero to 20, you're basically training. And then from 20, you start working. The difference is you retire early. So whether you want to retire in your 40s or 50s, we'll say roughly around 50 is where you'll say maybe retire early. So your plan is to retire about 15 years earlier. And then you're not going to work again, like just like a traditional retirement. The only difference is you're going to retire early. So as a result, you don't have the same 40 or 50 years to put money away for your retirement. So then you have to account for that in your strategy. What I mean is you may decide, okay, well, based on the amount of money that I'm, um, I'm going to be able to generate over these years, maybe I need to put away a larger amount of money. Maybe I have to put away 20, 30, 40, even 50% of my income so that I'm able to make sure I can retire 15, 20, 30 years early. And if that is something that you have, you're considering, or at least something that you're thinking about, then you also are going to be having to take into consideration. It's not just simply saying, okay, I'm going to put my money in the most aggressive investments possible. I'm going to be looking for the next Amazon or Facebook or Google. Like I'm going to get that next one in a million. And then I'm going to put all my chips on that. And we're going to, you know, make it big. The truth is you actually have to be, pulling aside more of your money that you want to make sure is not going anywhere. And what I mean is, as you get closer to retirement, that is when you actually start changing your strategy where you're not going to be going as aggressive because you don't have the opportunity to make back your money in the swings. Like if the market was able to you know, go like 20% down because something happened, right? We don't have to think hard about it. When you talk about pandemics, you can say, well, well, you know, COVID happened. And so a lot of companies closed and then a lot of stocks and a lot of retirement plans took a big hit. You could talk about the credit crunch and the financial recession that we had in 2008, again, where about 50% of the stock values people were losing in their portfolios. Again, it's not as much of a concern if you have the time to rebuild it. The issue comes into play when you're going to retire in the next five years or so. 
if you're five years from retirement, you don't really have that ability, right? So if you were dealing in the 2008 recession, for instance, if you were able to wait another 10 years by 2000 and, you know, let's say 2018, around 2020, the market is in new highs. It's made back all of the money. Life is great. Everybody is is uh, feeling rainbows and Skittles. It's, it is a great day to have your money invested. But on the other end, if you were retiring closer to 2010, then you weren't really able to make that money back. The market didn't make that the losses back over a reasonable amount of time. So as a result, you have a shorter window where your money is able to be aggressively invested. Because if your plan is to retire at 40 or 50, well, then you have to account for that. You have to start pulling some of your money out of the aggressive into more stable assets so that you're able to at least keep up with inflation. But you also, right, you're, you want to be able to access your money within the next one to five years. Well, you need to make sure your money is, is somewhat liquid. And you also want to make sure it doesn't have the risk of you losing a bunch of it. So that changes your strategy significantly and also changes the amount of time that you have to have your money growing in these aggressive stocks. So more times than not, people end up putting larger sums of money in early and then they're very aggressive with it early so that they're able to kind of build that momentum so that as they have to start changing some of their strategy as they get closer to retirement, that they're still able to retire early. Now, that is something that I think we all really would love to work towards. That's kind of the goal, especially if you have a dream inside where you feel like you're like you're putting here for a reason, like you want to be able to do something, but you have these obligations that you want to take care of first. Then the first step, if you are looking to retire a little early, is to make sure that you start paying off your different debts, right? The less debt you have, the easier it is for you to be able to live off of a smaller income. So then the the goal isn't as high, right? You don't need $100,000 a year if you don't have any debt, right? Your houses are paid off, your cars are paid off, maybe your kids are grown and they're, they're on their way. Then you don't need that same amount of money than if someone was carrying a bunch of debt into their retirement. Well, then they have what we would consider right, a break even that's a lot higher. Well, they have to have at least enough money to cover their mortgages and their car payment and maybe credit card debts. So you want to make sure that you're focusing on the debt as well as aggressively starting your investment so that you can get that compounding interest going. And then the third one is going to be kind of a blend between the two. Now, the third one is is becoming more common and we'll call it like semi retired. So what you may be doing and you can look at it in a couple different ways. One is you could say, you know what, I'm going to work as a you know, I used to work at an investment bank and traders would often retire in their mid 40s. It just wasn't the kind of uh, career that you would want to do for a long period of time. It's very stressful. It, it's very um, high paced and it's something that a lot of them end up making their money and then they move on to something else. So they semi retire. They may take off like the next five years where they just kind of get back some time with their family that they had to sacrifice and then they maybe travel and they they're able to kind of enjoy some of the fruits of their labor. But their plan is to go back to work in a less stressful environment or maybe they want to um, pick their next career as a more purposeful career where it's a purpose driven environment that they're going to be looking for. But their plan is only to really take like a little break, like a little sabbatical where we're going to travel. We're going to spend more time with family. We're not going to worry about things. Entrepreneurs, they do this commonly as well. You have a business, you build it up, whether you sell it or you systematize it where you're able to kind of take a step back from the business. And then you're able to take that extra time with your money where now you're able to focus a little bit more on your health, a little bit more on your family, and then you're able to be semi-retired. But then you come back, whether you have a new business idea or whether you are even someone, I, I know like military, they commonly will do that where they will work 20 years in military, they'll retire, they'll have that pension, and then they'll go and have another career for another 20 years to have another pension but they may take a small break between those two careers. So they semi-retire from one and they worked into the next one. Same thing with entrepreneurs where you have a, a certain career, a certain business that you've been working on, and then you sell that business. Well, it's not that you're gonna be retired forever, right? You still have different things that you wanna do. You still have different thoughts, ideas, and visions, but you may take a few years off or a few months if you really have an itch, and then you go back into um, operations or or maybe you're an executive for another company, or maybe you just work on the board and you start 
doing things with nonprofits. However, it is that you kind of have the, the next chapter set, that's what you're going to do. You're going to move into that chapter. And then also, if you have a, a high stress career or, or something that's very demanding of your time where you're able to move into your next career where you may not make as much, but that's okay because you have more time, you have less stress and less of a commitment. And so semi-retiring is becoming a little bit more common today because of just how long we're all living. And because of some of the, the issues that we mentioned in the retiring early, where people were like, okay, well, I don't have as many years to build up my compounding interest, but also with the traditional retirement where I just don't want to be working in something that I don't feel fulfilled in until I'm 65 years old. I don't really know what my health is going to be like. I don't really know, you know, where my family relations are going to be. Like, I just, that's just a really long time for me to just be waiting to like start living my life. Right. So Semi-retirement ends up being kind of the, the, the best of both worlds. It's kind of that little semi-middle where you have little sabbaticals, you have a worry to be able to refocus, get back with your family, spend some time traveling, enjoying some of the labors that you've built with your career or your business or different skills that you have. And then you're able to move into something that maybe has you feeling a little more fulfilled, a little more um, rewarding for you in other ways because you've been able to set it up that way. So those are the three types of retirements. Which one, I'm curious, is speaking to you? Are you someone that's planning traditional retirement that works best for you? You love what you're doing and you couldn't imagine um, ever stopping and you're not even sure that you're going to stop at 65? Or are you someone that wants to retire early and but you don't want to have any second adventures, right? When you retire, you're going to be done. You're retired to be retired and you're just going to retire early. Or the third one, are you someone that's going to be semi-retired? Are you going to take small breaks? Maybe you're going to travel and spend some time with loved ones, but then you, you'll be bored. So you want to get back to work on something else, or you have a passion project or a company that you want to start. And then you're going to use that as an opportunity to get back into things as well. You know, I'd love to hear in the comments, your thoughts on which one speaks to you the most. And on that note, if you want more help understanding your retirement needs, check out my free retirement planning that works video training at obsidianwisdom.com forward slash training. In it, I'll give you my entire wisdom metric framework that I use with my clients to help them eradicate financial stress, generate a passive income, and build a prosperous retirement strategy. Until next time, Wisdomites, remember wisdom is asking the right questions that allow you to get the right answers. Keep asking those questions and you will keep getting those answers. Continue blessings.